In the year 2018, a set of new stories were released within the novel of Predator, If It Bleeds. Man has once again come up against the ultimate hunter. These stories take place in different time periods and across different cultures. The story I'm going to cover for this video is Three Sparks. It takes place in feudal Japan and follows the story of a disgraced former samurai that goes by the name of Nasu Hiroto. When a mysterious demon sets foot upon their land, it slaughters everyone it meets. Nasu Hiroto is given a chance at redemption if he can stop the demon. The story opens up with Hiroto coming across a few dangling bodies around noon. He could not recognize their social status since they were skinned, so he was unsure if they were a samurai. The bodies had a strong stench, were bloated, and from the heat, he assumes the bodies were there for about three days. During his time, he had skinned a lot of game, but even in the state of the bodies, Hiroto was impressed with this oni butchering these men. He didn't see any signs of rope nearby, so it would take an incredible amount of strength to haul these corpses way up there. In the past, he had seen big cats carry their prey up the trees, but this time, this felt different. It felt staged for their benefit. It was hard to tell if this was a message or to mark their territory. Most men would be full of fear when they see these bodies, but Hiroto tried to hide his admiration for this oni, and so he acted as if he too was scared. Whatever happened here, it was from a skilled warrior or a demon. Captain Nasu Hiroto's past included him being a hero of the Battle of Daino Ura, hero of the Battle of Kori Kara. He was a master swordsman and champion archer of the Minamoto clan. He could be considered the finest archer in history, if not second only to his father. Yet after the war, there was no peace for Hiroto. He took one of the shogun's ships and traveled wherever the waves carried him. Always searching for a new battle, new prey to hunt, new beasts to slay. Over the years, there were many tales of Hiroto. Some say he would hunt tigers in the jungles on Tenjiku, or great white bears in the desolate lands in the north. Some believed that Hiroto was the greatest hunter in the world. When he returned, he was brought before the shogun, Minamoto Yoritomo. After their victory over the Taira clan, the shogun would have given Hiroto great responsibilities, but this meant Hiroto would teach children how to use bows. He said he would grow bored with this task, and felt his skills would be wasted. This was the reason Hiroto left his duties. And so, Upon his return to Kamakura, he awaits his final judgment from the Shogun. The only reason he came back is because he heard that his lord required his services. People speak about the Oni of Aoki Gahara Forest, a demon that slaughters men and hangs their bodies. Many samurai have rushed to the forest, trying to win the favor of the Shogun, but all have failed. From the few witnesses that survived, they speak of an invisible demon, stronger than any man, and it kills with a spear, claw, or bolts of lightning, before it vanishes as quickly as it appears. Hiroto was very interested in these stories. This is why Hiroto came out of hiding. This oni would be a great challenge for him. Yoritomo tells Hiroto that the only warning before the oni strikes its prey are the three glowing embers that form a triangle and appear on its victim. After so many have perished fighting this oni, many believe that it cannot be defeated by a mortal hand. The same thing was said about the great sea beast before Hiroto's father killed it with a single arrow through the eye. The shogun says that this was the greatest feat any man has accomplished under his rule no man has ever equaled his father's legacy, not even the man who has hunted every dangerous beast under the sun. 
if Hiroto is able to defeat the Oni of Aoki Gahara, he could finally match his father's legend. Hiroto could never resist a great challenge. He had never fought a demon before. Hiroto would then begin his new task. Each morning meant he was a bit closer to the mountain, and so was his next great challenge. The shogun would send a young warrior, born of high status. He was Ashikage Motokani, and five bodyguards to accompany Hiroto on his journey. Even though Hiroto helped their lord rise to power a long time ago, because he abandoned his duties and fled his homeland, the shogun's other samurai saw him as a dishonorable outcast, a wild man, an anomaly, in their orderly world. If things got really bad, Hiroto plans to use them as bait. The map provided by the shogun showed a small village at the edge of the forest, so Hiroto picked that place as their destination. But upon arriving, it was just a bunch of rotten huts and stinking pig pens. It was a good time for them to restock their supplies and ask around for any information, but as they were spotted by the villagers, the local people fled their fields and ran to their huts. Villages like this were often menaced by one conquering army or another. Even during times of peace, bandits were always around. One farmer remained at the center of the village to greet them. He was their appointed headman. Hiroto told his team to stay back as he would approach the man alone, but Ashikage Motokane did not listen. He walked toward the farmer in a very intimidating way. Hiroto wanted to ask the villagers some questions that might help them, but Ashikage Motokane looked upon them with disgust and saying they should take any supplies they need and move on. Because of how he spoke to the villagers, it was no wonder they saw no difference between bandit and samurai. The headman approached them and said their village already paid their taxes, but the heat had affected their crops, and he asked for them to please have mercy. Hiroto interrupted him and said, I am Nasu Hiroto. We have come to kill the Oni of Aoki Gahara. The headman responds with this, You are not the first. The stories are true. Our land is cursed. It is a terrible scourge. We are so thankful more brave samurai have come to fight the demon. Hiroto noticed the headman did not sound relieved. He was more annoyed by this visit. Many of you have come through here this summer, eating our food, putting our men to work as guides. One of the villagers saw it first, perched up on the tree, shaped like a man but bigger, with a head like an ox. She thought it was an angry ghost and ran away. Old Genzo saw it too. He heard the thunder when it killed the first samurai. It put the three sparks on him too, but Genzo fled before more lightning came. He was lucky it did not chase him, cause this oni is swift as a horse. If any creature could slaughter samurai so easily, the villagers would have no chance against them. Hiroto asked the headman, how many of your people have died? The headman says, It is hard to believe, but none, noble samurai. He has only attacked mighty warriors such as you. Our village has not been troubled by three sparks. Ashikaga Motokani accused the villagers of siding with the Oni demon, seeing as how it spared all their lives. The headman pleaded that they would never betray their lord. They even offered gifts to the demon. This only made Ashikage Motokane more irritated. He drew his sword slowly, but Hiroto put him at ease. Hiroto needs information from these people. The forest was unnaturally quiet. The wind did not penetrate the trees. There were no birds singing, no insects buzzing, nothing. No wonder the place was considered haunted even before the Oni had moved in. When morning came, the others were fully equipped and ready for war. Their bows were strung, spears held high, and their swords at their sides. The Shogun's finest looked like fearsome combatants, a worthy challenge for any demon. Meanwhile, 
Hiroto walked a little behind them. He stripped himself of armor and weapons. He placed a bamboo pole on his shoulder with a bundle hanging from each end. He also rolled onto the field to look and smell like a local farmer. The other samurai thought he had gone mad when they saw Hiroto left his sword behind. But Hiroto knew something the others did not. He would be no threat, especially to a mighty Oni. He took the part of a porter, a local man who would carry the supplies of the other samurai, because the forest was too rugged for their horses. The headman told them the same thing happened with the other samurais that visited. Only the porter carrying their supplies would come back terrified, sometimes covered in blood, but alive. Most beasts on the land would target the weakest prey, but this oni was different. It attacked the strong. Hiroto would use that information to his knowledge. The other samurai would boast about who would slay the oni and how they would spend their reward. Meanwhile, Hiroto would keep his head down. He knew it was hard using his eyes to find a creature which was invisible, so he just listened in a forest without sound. Even the faintest thing became audible. The oni was quiet, but not as quiet as other creatures that hunt. Occasionally, Hiroto would hear flesh scrape against bark, or the creak of a branch as weight settled on it. But there was another sound, barely audible, but unnatural, like the chittering of an insect combined with the slithering of a snake on the sand. This sound was different. All these sounds would have been lost in a noisy forest. He realized right there they were being followed. Hiroto was excited, but tried not to let it show. They later located its samurai body by a nearby stream and missing its head. It's identified as Hojo Murashiga. The identity of this body seems to shake the others because Hojo Murashiga was a fearsome swordsman, the best of us. Not only did it take his head, this oni also ripped out his spine. Motokane was stressed the entire day. He got up and spoke out. Show yourself, demon. Show yourself so I can kill you like the wretched cowardly dog you are. Hiroto took a few steps away from the angry samurai. The local people told him that the oni threw lightning bolts. And he thought it was not wise to stand close to the most tempting target. While Motokane continued to rant and yell, Hiroto looked for tracks or any clues. He saw footprints on some nearby moss. He examined a cut on a tree. Judging by the height and angle, it had come from someone extremely tall. Deep cuts. Incredible strength. With twin blades. An odd weapon. Nearby, he would see green-looking paint, but it was actually the blood of the Oni. The smell was completely alien. He noticed something else by the rocks. He picked it up, but just then, Kaneto's chest exploded, hit by something with a flash of light. Motokane's shouting was interrupted as his bodyguards' blood sprayed him in the face. Kaneto dropped to his knees. His body was lifeless, then flopped forward. His wound must have been incredibly hot. It was burnt, and steam came from the giant hole in Kaneto's back. The samurais reacted instantly. Spears were lifted, and arrows were knocked. They looked around, but could not find a target. The men looked around, but saw nothing. Then they heard a thumping sound as the oni jumped around from tree to tree, and then silence. It had moved back in the distance to watch them from safety. This meant it would be some time before the next attack. Meanwhile, Hiroto opened his hand to see the item he found by the rock earlier. It was a severed finger of the oni. It seems that one samurai had challenged it to a duel, and the oni was injured during that battle. 
Hiroto spoke to one of the bodyguards named Nobuo. He mentions that he saw the three sparks on Kineto before he died. They lingered for a few heartbeats before the lightning flash appeared. At first, he thought the three sparks held some spiritual significance, but now he learns that the Oni uses it to aim before firing the lightning bolt. This knowledge will be useful if he should see the three sparks again. During sundown, the next attack occurred upon their team. Hiroto saw a single leaf fall to their side around 50 paces. Then moments later, a branch vibrated high above around 30 paces ahead. The Oni is here, he whispered. Nobuo quietly repeated that to the next samurai in line, who then gave the message to Motokane. And this is when Motokane ruined their approach by shouting, HALT! Spears and arrows were ready. Hiroto acted like a scared porter and hid behind a tree. After several seconds had passed, three flickering sparks appeared on Zenzuko's helmet. Look out! Nobuo shouted. He then hurls himself against his companion. The lightning bolt missed its target, and Hiroto had seen exactly from where that bolt had come from. He drops the bamboo shaft and satchels, which was holding his real cargo all along. One samurai launches an arrow into the branches. He missed the oni, but he was close. The oni shot another lightning bolt, but this time there were no three red sparks seen, so it must have rushed this attack. The blast still hit the samurai, sending one of his legs flying away. Hiroto pulls out one of his special arrows, careful to not cut himself with it. These arrows were covered in a poison. One samurai pulls out his sword, challenging the Oni to a duel, but the Oni learned his mistake last time, so he blew the man's arm off with another lightning bolt. Amongst the chaos, Ashikage Motokani can be seen running away. A tree exploded near him, and he was lost from view in a cloud of splinters. Hiroto was right. The Oni focused on the warriors with weapons and ignored Hiroto when he was acting like a mere peasant with no weapons? Hiroto is a fast learner. Like him, the Oni only enjoyed hunting dangerous prey. That was its mistake, as Hiroto was more dangerous than any other man. Hiroto focused on where the lightning came from, aimed his arrow, and fired. The Oni's roar was the sign he was struck by the arrow. But Hiroto did not stop. He recalls the time he shot a giant bear with six arrows, and it still had the strength to charge him. Surely a demon would be tougher. He continued firing more arrows up into the trees, until finally he saw something move. Light seemed to twist and reflect as it moved around. It was like staring into a diamond, and for the first time he saw the only was truly shaped like a man, but larger. Hiroto fired another arrow, and it pierced the Oni's chest. Then it dropped from the tree. He couldn't see if it landed on his feet or its back. Meanwhile, Zenzuka was screaming in pain. Because of Nobuo's quick reactions, his sode had been hit, instead of his helmet. His shoulder plate showed a burning hole, and part of it had caught on fire. Nobuo helped his friend before he was burnt alive in his own armor. Hiroto was only able to hide so many arrows inside the bamboo pole, so he picked up Zenzuka's quiver as he ran past them. He said to the other men, It is wounded. Follow when you can. Hiroto ran through the bushes and chased after the oni. He noticed insects and lizards that could become the same color as the ground around them. This oni's magic worked far better, but in a similar manner. When he locates the spot where the Oni had fallen, more green blood is found nearby. When it's fresh, it glows like a smashed firefly, easy to see and track as the light was fading quickly. Later on, Nobu had gotten Senzuka's armor off. It was burning and had to be removed. But the other samurai's shoulder was severely injured. His right arm hung useless at this point. Injuries like this would make any normal man feel a lot of pain, but he hid it 
behind a mask of grim determination to stop this oni, and carried his katana weapon in his left hand. Nobuo finally saw the oni's blood and says, Then we can track it. Hiroto tells him that the arrows he used on the oni were coated in a concentrated poison from jellyfish. They decide to wait to see if the oni will suffer any weakness, paralysis, or even death from it. Samurai consider poison a cowardly and dishonorable way to kill, but Nobuo and Zanzuka did not disagree with using this method. At this point, they just wanted to survive. Motokane would show up a minute later and joins them in following the trail of green blood. When they first encountered the Oni, it was easily jumping from treetop to treetop. Now, it was sticking to the ground. An experienced hunter would use this blood trail to set up a trap or ambush if it was being followed. Hiroto offers Motokane the chance to take lead, trying to convince him to get the striking blow on the weakened Oni, but he refuses and puts Nobuo in charge of the lead. Further along the path, they would find a spot near a land bridge with a big amount of blood. It took Hiroto a moment to spot the danger up ahead. Among the roots, there was something metallic. It was hidden slightly, but with a keen eye, you could see it was a trap. The blood trails show the demon walking around the pond and behind them. When the trap was activated by the lead man, maybe a snare or spring noose, the sound would attract their attention forward, while the demon would attack them from behind. With only four members left alive, the Oni could take out half of them in one move. Hiroto whispered to Nobuo and said this, Count to thirty and set off the trap. Throw this rock at it. He crept back to Motokane and Senzuka and waited. If he can spot the creature moving, he's ready to put an arrow through it. Then he waited for Nobuo to make his move. Nobuo threw the rock at the trap. It erupted with yellow light. Nobuo hurled through the air as fire debris fell from the explosion. It was not a normal trap, but something more powerful. Hirota was so impressed with this Oni's power, he thought to himself, If I had weapons such as this, there is nothing I could not hunt. Hiroto could barely see, but the three red dots appeared on his arm, climbing upward slowly, until it disappeared over his chest. Instinctively, he flung his body to the side, knowing a lightning bolt was sure to follow. The tree behind him was pierced open, and splinters flew outward. He was the one who had hurt the Oni, so now he was its greatest threat. It was rather strange how the Oni was able to pick him out and see in the dark. Hiroto got to his feet and quickly ran, trying to put more trees between his body and the Oni's fury. As he tried to escape, more lightning struck. Branches came crashing down, rocks shattered into pieces, and bushes burst into flame. Hiroto made it to safety by taking cover behind a boulder. He then peeked over the top and saw that some trees were set on fire from the trap set by the Oni. It was still using its magic to conceal its body, but as it neared a fire, Hiroto saw it. It looked like pieces of broken glass in the image of a tall man. Senzuka saw it too. He lifted his katana in one hand, charged, and let out a war cry. The light twisted where the Oni's head could have been, as if it turned to face the incoming threat. What looked like the Oni's arm raised up, and two blades glowed in the night. Hiroto rose to his feet, pulled back his bowstring, and released an arrow towards it. The arrow disappeared into the demon's unnatural form, piercing its flesh. A mere man would perish in seconds from this attack, but not this demon. The reflective broken glass of the Oni's magic showed it was still standing, but everything had a weak spot. It was only a matter of finding it. He pulled back his bow and unleashed another arrow. It traveled through the air. If it had no heart, then he would try to disable its arms. It struck the Oni, but the arm still came down, slicing Zenzuka in half. As the samurai's body went passing by both sides of the Oni, Hiroto truly saw it for the first time.
His last arrow had broken the evil spell. It was truly a giant, taller than any samurai he ever saw. The large head was made of shining metal. Its hair was like a sadhu monk and body covered in a fisherman's net. Hiroto fired off two more arrows, one in the stomach and another in the leg. Suddenly, the boulder in front of Hiroto disintegrated. When the flash occurred, he was hurled through the air. It turns out the Oni did not need the three sparks to aim its lightning, but it did help the accuracy. Upon hitting the ground so hard, it knocked the wind out of him. He also lost his bow. He was near the edge of the pond, just 20 paces away. He saw Nobuo's body laying in the mud. He was breathing, but knocked unconscious. He saw the Oni approaching. It had given up on stealth, as its heavy footsteps could be heard crashing against the rocks. He could see the Oni coming closer and closer. Hiroto had no weapons, and Nobuo's swords were too far away. The only option he had was to hide and surprise it later on. Hiroto was an excellent fighter with his bare hands, but his opponents were not usually as big as a horse. He laid in the murk, holding his breath as the Oni walked past him. Either it could not see him or it was going to finish off another person first. Hiroto reached out with his hand to feel something wooden, smooth, and with a spike. Maybe he could use it. As he slowly lifted himself from the murk, he saw the Oni was standing over Nobuo. Looking at the Oni, Hiroto could see plenty of arrows embedded across its body, each wound leaking green blood. He could read the Oni's intentions just by his actions. The Oni was furious. Even though Nobuo was not the one who injured it, it lifted its arm blade, about to kill him anyway. As Hiroto tried to rise quietly, he still made some noise. Maybe it was the pond water dripping from the war club, or the mud sucking his skin as he rose up. Either way, the Oni heard him. It spun around, its braids whipping in the movement. It towered over Hiroto, but it did not strike him down right away. The Oni paused, perhaps confused, as if Hiroto were the invisible one now. Hiroto swung the Tetsubo weapon he picked up, aiming for the head, but its sudden movement caused him to strike it in the shoulder instead. Flesh and blood were torn from the body. He continued his attack with an overhand strike. Then, with an arc movement, he swung the Oni's extended leg. He heard a snapping sound, and it dropped to its knees. The Oni retaliated by lashing out with its twin blades, but Hiroto blocked it with his Tetsubo weapon. But the blades cut through the wood as if it were nothing, cutting Hiroto's face at the same time. It was the worst pain he ever felt in his life. The blow had rattled his brain. The world was spinning. All he could do at this point was hold on. He felt the cuts over his face, felt an empty eye socket, and screamed. Through his remaining eye, he watched the demon trying to get up, but its broken leg kept it kneeling down. Hiroto had seen many enemies fall before him. Something about the way the Oni was moving said that it was done. It began crawling toward Hiroto. He tried to stand, but his body was in so much pain, it would not do what he wanted. All he could do was crawl backwards. Nobu had just woken up, calling out for the hunter. His sword was still in a sheath, and he threw it to Hiroto. It landed in his lap. The Oni pulled back its fist, then aiming it at Hiroto's heart. But with a quick swing, Hiroto slashed the creature. The katana cut through half the demon's chest. Blood splattered into the forest in a long arc, and then the two of them remained there for a short time. Staring at each other, the demon twitched. The twin blades dropped slowly to the ground. It twisted the blade free, and three sparks, the Oni of Aoki Gahara, was no more. Hirota was feeling tremendous amounts of pain, but he was still able to laugh anyway. The summer of death was finally over. It was a fine hunt, one that Hiroto will remember for the rest of his life. Ashikage Motokane would then come out of hiding. He was within the trunk of a hollow tree. 
You're still alive. Is it done? He asked, as he slowly got out. Hirota was feeling weak and nauseous. He walked towards Ashikage and asked, Were you hiding in there all night? Ashikage said this, Yes, and I was all alone, because some bodyguard you are. Hiroto didn't even think twice about looking back. When he heard Nobuo's sword clear its sheep, he cut Ashikaga's head clean off. Then its head bounced down the rocks. He says to Hiroto, When we report to the Shogun, it was a shame there were no other survivors. If a samurai chooses to hide during battle, it is dishonorable. Then blaming the casualties on another is disgraceful. Ashikage was punished immediately by Nobuo. When Nasu Hiroto returned to the Shogun, he presented the magnificent trophy he acquired from the Oni. It was on the floor between them, and they spoke privately. The Shogun realized that Hiroto was different from other samurai. The others would spend their whole lives to make a mask that never shows fear, that declares they live for battle, hiding their true weakness beneath. But for Hiroto, there is no mask. You only feel alive when you are hunting something capable of taking your life. Nothing else will do. Hiroto simply nodded, agreeing with what the Shogun learned about him. Minamoto Yoritomo says, He's had a problem for many years, and they could learn much from the Oni of Aoki Gahara. It was invisible, calculating, hiding in plain sight, then attacking with ruthless efficiency, leaving his enemies filled with dread. It was the ultimate assassin. To be stalked by such would bring nightmares to even the bravest samurai indeed. The Shogun would then offer Hiroto the chance to never be bored again, to have a hunt which never ends. The Shogun has many enemies, dangerous men. Sometimes politics make it so that he cannot deal with them directly. The Oni has shown him the answer. The Shogun wants invisible killers that use methods most samurai would not agree to do. He requires men that can fight like demons. Hirota was getting excited. But such a task would require the utmost secrecy. This group of men would be called Shinobi no Mono. They would emulate the Oni of Aoki Gahara. The Shogun asks Nasu Hiroto if he would build this organization for him. He gladly accepts the offer by saying, It would be an honor. The first ninja bowed to the first Shogun. The End all I can say about this story is, wow, that was truly amazing. A great story with an ending that surprised me. The ninja were created to collect information by the use of stealth and to exterminate any opposing threat to the ruler of Japan. They were the unseen warriors that used different methods than that of a samurai. These were traits picked up by the oni that they encountered. Invisible silent, stalking its prey, then eliminating them at the right time, by any means necessary. This story led to the creation of the ninja, at least for the lore within the Predator universe. This is one of a few stories that is linked to real historical events or individuals, and use it as the starting point for their own story. Minamoto no Yoritomo was the founder and the first shogun of the Kamakura Shogunate of Japan. Aokigahara Forest is a relocation in Japan. A few years before this story came out, Sideshow Collectibles made a predator figure. Its design was reminiscent of a Japanese ogre called Oni. After this, there were other predator figures based off a samurai design. So that covers the story of Three Sparks from the novel Predator, If It Bleeds. What do you think about the story? Give me your feedback in the comments section. This video took a long time to put together, so please leave a like on it. And if you want to see more stories like this, all you have to do is subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching. This is Carlos or Acid Glow, and I'll see you on the next hunt.